Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So this is another uh, installment of Daily Benefits. Uh, I haven't been doing this and I haven't been very active with the lessons and with anything right now because the last week I've been, uh, last two weeks, I've been very sick so I'm almost done. So uh, inshallah hopefully, bithni Allah ta'ala, I'm getting better. My body's still adjusting to this, this weather. I've been in the desert for 21 years so almost done this climate is is uh, is knocking me out <laughs> so it's just because uh, in florida especially it's, it's very humid and it's uh it just goes from like being cold in the morning to very hot during the day and then being back to being cool at night and it's just this back and forth thing with humidity then less humidity so yeah i'm just used to just it's just like you know in sardia it's just either it's, it's hot or cold that's it khalas there's no two ways around, uh, around it. It's either 100 and, 110, 115 degrees, or or it's just cold. Halas, you know. So a long time. But uh, and plus with that, like I said, it's just uh, you know being out in the desert, you don't have a lot of uh, greenery, trees, and pollen, and all this type of stuff. So I guess the body has to readjust. So, so in this one, inshallah, I'm gonna go over a hadith because this is an issue that came up this morning with a brother in regards to like uh, the fair and is it permissible to go to the fair. I'm going to read the hadith first, inshallah, and then I'm going to go over the issue because it's not just about the fair. It's also about other issues, inshallah, that, that are included, that can be included in this hadith and things that we face here in the West, inshallah. So this hadith is an Thabit ibn Dhuhaq, radiyallahu anhu, qala, nadara rajalun ala ahdi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an yinhara ibn abi buwana. Fata nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqala inni nadarata an anhara ibn abi buwana. Faqala nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hal kana fiha wathanun min awthana jahiliyati yu'bad, qalu la. قال هل كان فيها عيد من عيالهم قالوا لا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أوفي بالنظر فإنه لا وفاء لنظر في معصية الله ولا في ما لا يملك ابن آدم أخرج أبو داود بإسناد صحيح. so this hadith is ثابت من الضحاك in which he said that he uh, he 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 swore an oath to uh, uh, you know the, not not him but a man he swore an oath على أحد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دون تام دون تام من الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم to to Yenhar. Yenhar is a, this is the way that you slaughter a camel. Because a camel, you can't, uh, you can't slaughter it by slicing its throat. Because of the neck of the camel, you have to stab it in the neck. And this is how you, and this is called a nahar. And it's not the same as the dhabah. is for, like, dhabah is for the animals that you, uh, because you're, you're slicing the two jugular veins. That's for, like, the sheep, the cows, and whatnot. So, but with the, uh, with the camels, it's called a nahar. You know, so he said, So he 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 swore his oath that he's gonna uh, he's gonna slaughter this uh, a camel in this place called Bawana. So they went to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said, you know, and you know, and, he, and the man said, and you know, I, I I swore an oath to to to, uh, to slaughter a camel in Bawana. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him two questions before he answered him and just said, okay, go ahead and do it, fulfill your oath, right? He asked him two questions. He said, He said, is this a place where they used to worship any of the, the gods from Jahiliyyah? So this is, is this a place where worship took place, right? They said, no. He said, Is this a place where they used to celebrate any of their ayad, any of their eids? So قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أوفي بنظرك فإنه لا وفاء لنظر في معصية الله He said, then fulfill your oath. Because there's no fulfillment of an oath and a disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or and if a person were to uh, make an oath about uh, in regards to giving something that he doesn't possess. So like for example, you can't say, oh, you know, if uh, if, uh, if Allah, uh, if, uh, if Allah uh, cures my mother, I'm going to give away my brother's car. You know, in sadaqah, you can't give away your brother's car. It's, it's not your possession. So, ولا في ما لا يملك ابن آدم. So there's no fulfillment of an oath and something that you don't possess. So the point is, is that uh, we don't. All right, number one, we don't uh, take part in any of their celebrations, nor do we do any specific acts of worship in places where they where they do their acts of worship, nor where they celebrate their ayat. So if we're not allowed to do our own act of wor worship. And places where they celebrate their aids, then obviously, then we're definitely not. It's not definitely not permissible for us to take part in their aids. And what is an aid? Because I mean, the word aid it comes from ada yaudu, ada yaudu, and ada yaudu it means that something it, it returns, because it returns 
every uh, during a specific period. So generally, an aid will return once every year, once every year. So it's an annual thing, but it could be a monthly thing, it could be a weekly thing, and that's why they refer to uh, Juma Juma as the Eid al Uzbur, because it returns every every week. So it's the Eid al Uzbur, as a Yaud, kula an Uzburian. All right, so it returns every week. So any uh, with with these th with these types of celebrations that the kufar have, like the fairs, and uh, and whatnot, and the fair, I'm just mentioning this now because, like I said, this is an issue that came up here because it is uh, in Jacksonville where where I live. It is it's fair time, right? So and then the whole question because uh, you know when I was talking with the brother this morning, I was just saying that you know the the weather starts to cool off. It always cools off around the fair time, you know, because the fair time is always at the beginning of November. And this is when the weather starts to cool off a little bit. So, and then then the whole discussion came up about the permissibility about going to this. So, based on this hadith, if, if, they, if we're not allowed to do any acts of worship in the place. Like, for example, let, let's say, let's say that, uh, all right, they have a specific place where they have this fair. This is their celebration every single year. Every single year. And then the Muslims decide, oh, okay, look, this year we're going to hold the Eid, the Salat al-Eid, on the fairgrounds. Now, would it be permissible? We say no, because this is a place where they where they have their Eid, and this is a place where they have their celebrations, and we don't do that. We don't go and have a celebration where they're known to have their celebrations. So our Eids are not celebrated in the same place where their Eids are celebrated, or where they have disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see, like a lot of people, they start to hold... The Eid of the the, the Salat al Eid and these and these like uh, uh, these uh, these auditorium type places where they have concerts and all types of disobedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yeah, he go to a park, go to a park, or go to some place where they're not where it's known where they're not having these types of concerts and these types of disobedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and hold the worship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in these places where this disobedience is not known. You know because. We don't, we don't, you know, Allah Musta'an. I mean, if you look at the hadith, I mean, that's the, that's the problem. We're dealing with a lot of people in the West that uh, control these masajid that have no knowledge about the religion whatsoever. So if there's any type of worship that goes on in this place, then we don't do any acts of worship of ours in that place. And if, and we don't specify that place for any act of worship. So we're not going to take and choose a place of Eid. And we're going to celebrate our Eid in this place where, where they're known for celebrating theirs. Where they're, they're, they're celebrations. You know, like, for example, if they have like a New Year's Day celebration in a specific place or if they have a Fourth of July celebration in a specific place or if they have a, you know, a fair celebration in a specific place or some type of Thanksgiving parade in a specific place. We're not going to go and celebrate our holidays, our, our AIDS in these places where they celebrate theirs. All right, we can go choose any other public places that are not known for, you know, celebrating this. Or you can, you know, it's better to have the Salat al-Aid in the parking lot of the masjid than to go out and to, you know, to, to have it in these places where disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala occurs or where these people are celebrating their 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 AIDS. So this is something that, you know, to ponder on and something to think about. So is it permissible to go to the fair? No. I mean, if it's not even the, the issue of partaking in their ayad, then it's the issue of all the type of facade that goes on in these types of places. So the Muslim, he tries to avoid all these types of places to the, to the best of your capability. Obviously, if you're living in America, you know, there's a certain things that you can't avoid. You can't avoid. You have to go to the supermarket. You have to buy. I mean, alhamdulillah, you do actually have delivery services now. It is a lot easier. But still, you know, you go and you buy food and you, you have to get food for the family. You have your kids need clothes. You have to go clothes shopping and things like that. So these are these are like things that you have to do. There's no way around them. So you go and you get what you need and you get back to safety, I guess you could say. But to like put yourself in a predicament, like for example, like if I want to go and buy clothes, I can go to like an outlet place. I don't have to go to the mall. I don't have to go to a place where I know where there's going to be more facade, like corruption and, you know, half naked girls and, or fully naked girls or whatever, walking around the mall and then then my kids have to see this and then you can't look down, you can't look up, you can't look to the left, you can't look to the right without seeing something that's going to affect your heart. So we try to avoid these these places at all costs. And there's no benefit of a person going to a fair. There's no benefit of a person going to any of these types of functions that these kufar have. All right, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, we have brotherhood, we have, we have something amongst us that they don't have. You know, and I've never been able to sit down with a group of brothers and just sit there and drink coffee and enjoy myself talking with talking with brothers because the brotherhood that we have in islam 
and the, the closest that we have, the closest that we have, and you know, just to, to, to sit down and enjoy even sh sharing knowledge or talking about knowledge or talking about experiences of traveling, everything is way more interesting than anything that these Kufar could ever, could, could ever do. And that's what people need to stay busy with. People need to stay busy with seeking knowledge and, and stay away from these places. If you're trying to memorize the Quran, these places are not places that, you know, the Quran is not going to stay in your heart if you're constantly frequenting these types of places and being around these places of corruption where these people just like go and they just act foolish and they waste their money and they waste their time all to show off, all to just like do nothing, you know. So stay away from these places. Stay away from all. Stay away from any, any place and avoid any type of situation you don't that you don't need to be going to you don't need to go to the beach you want to go to the beach go after fudger go right after fudger you want to see the ocean and you want to see the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation go after go right after fudger go sit out there and see the sunrise and then go home you don't have to go to the beach at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and you know and end up saying oh look at all this facade Actually, you put yourself in that position don't don't complain you 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 chose the time and you knew what was going to happen so close or even if you were to go to the beach, there's different beaches where there's nobody there. You can go there if you just want to see the beach. You want to see the creation of Allah. You know, but see, the thing is, is that it's almost like people choose these places for, for these types of purposes. Because they didn't want to accidentally see something. <laughs> you know, so Allah must die. You know, protect yourself. And, you know, protect yourself and try to avoid all these places at all costs. You know, the same thing. You want to eat a, you know, you, you want to eat somewhere. You, 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 I mean, alhamdulillah, you have Muslim restaurants all over the place. Why do you need to go to, to like a, you know, to some place that has like a bar and grill type place? Why you got to go to a place where people are drinking? Avoid these places. These places, there's disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you go and sit in a restaurant where they're sitting there serving and drinking alcohol in front of you? How can you go to a, a sporting event when they're drinking alcohol and they're, they're mixing, they're free mixing and they're playing music and you got girls dancing in front of you? How can you go to these things? How can you go to these things and expect that you're gonna, you know, keep you know keep your iman and and memorize the Quran and study the Deen? You can't. Stay away from these places. Stay away from these places. Partic participating in these sporting events is similar to participating in any type of aid, because it's a celebration. It's one of their it's one of their things. One of the, uh, you know, like the like the football. It's a, it's an aid. It comes around every Sunday, right? It's the, that's their aid. Just like the Juma is our aid of the Earth's board. This is their aid. Every Sunday it comes around. And then, you know, you go into the stadium and participating in this type of foolishness. It's not permissible. It's not permissible. I mean, and just add to every other thing that's there, you know, the mixing of, you know, the free mixing. You buy a ticket, you might be sitting right next to a man's wife that's uncovered. Like your seat might right be right next to hers. And then on top of that, like I said, you got the music, you got the girls dancing, you got all this type of stuff. So how, how, how can you justify going and being and taking part in these types of things these these things are not permissible muslims should not be seen in these places at all so avoid this at all costs with law must